Hello OET people, my name is Jay and I'm one of the expert OET teachers here at e2language.com which by the way is a premium preparation provider. We are one of the best OET institutes in the world. We're 100% computer based. All you need to do is open your laptop, you can sit at home, you can learn and prepare for the OET from the comfort of your own home which is awesome. Right, in this live class we're going to focus on OET writing. We're going to look at a step in the method where you need to transform case notes, which is actually kind of complicated. Before that though, let's go through the method. You should be aware by now that there are four steps to the E2 language OET writing method. The first one is to interpret the case notes. Then you select relevant case notes. Then you organize case notes logically before transforming them accurately. What does interpret mean? Well, interpret means this. This is what the case notes look like on test day. You can see that there are certain little, uh, what would you call this, acronyms, I guess. There are numbers. Uh, there are certainly no complete sentences. There are sentences that are kind of hard to interpret, like this. There are little squiggles and symbols. There's a number of confusing way in which these case notes are presented in front of you. So your first step during the reading time is to interpret the case notes correctly. Because if you misinterpret it and you write it into your letter in a way that is incorrect, well that's going to affect your score. So there is only one way to interpret these case notes correctly. So that's the first step of the method on test day. Interpretation. Then you will think about selection and you'll be selecting according to the task, according to who you're writing to. So when you're selecting, you're thinking about who you're writing to. You're writing, you're selecting according to the task. Basically, there's two rules here. You choose relevant case notes and you ignore irrelevant case notes. It all depends on the task and who you're writing to and why though. Right, that sets the agenda for selection. You need to ask yourself a couple of questions when you're thinking about case note selection. One is, if I were the recipient of the letter, what would I want to know? So let's say you're a nurse and you're writing a referral letter or a doctor writing a referral letter. Let's say you're writing to a physiotherapist, right? So. If you're the doctor and you're writing to the physiotherapist, you need to ask yourself, if I were the physiotherapist, what would I want to know from these case notes? Which case notes would I want to be told about? Which, you know, part of, which part of the medical history, which part of the, the diagnosis, what would the physio want to know? Which ones are relevant, which ones are irrelevant? Okay, so that's the first question you need to ask yourself. The second question you need to ask yourself is, if I were the recipient, if I were the physiotherapist, how would I want the information to be organized in terms of priority? Which information would you put at the top of the letter or which information, which case notes are more important than the other case notes? Okay, one of the things that you're graded on in this letter is how well you prioritize important information. Let's say you're writing to a physiotherapist about somebody who recently broke their arm and they also have a dislocated finger, right? But, but the finger's actually fine now, it just needs a little bit of stretching. Which is more important? Which would you prioritize, the finger or the arm? Okay, so you need to think about that. Okay, you should also ask yourself these questions when you're thinking about selecting case notes. Does the recipient know the patient already? What is extremely relevant? What is semi-relevant, possibly relevant? You should always err on the side of caution and include semi-relevant case notes. Better to include semi-relevant than to not include semi-relevant, okay? But there will also be case notes that are completely irrelevant, which you definitely should ignore. And you'll see those, they're kind of like distractors, okay? They're put in there to distract you. It'll say something like, you're writing to the physiotherapist and the person's an accountant. Does that matter? Possibly, I guess, if he's sitting down all day, but you need to think about these things in relevance. 
Okay, this leads us to the third step of the E2 language OET writing method, which is to organize the case notes logically. There are two main structures, and we looked at this in the last live class. You can order your write, you can organize your writing by order of importance, or you can organize your writing by time or visit. Uh, in other words, chronologically. Let's have a look at by order of importance first to refresh your memory. So you may structure your writing or organize your writing like this, if it's order of importance. The reason for writing, the main medical issue. Second paragraph, the main medical issue in detail. Third paragraph, secondary or related issue. Fourth paragraph, the discharge or management plan. Something like this. So in doing this, what we have done is we've prioritized the main medical issue at the top. And as we head down the letter, we're getting through less important information until we hit the management plan, which is again important and it's located right at the end. So if you think about it like this, right at the beginning, you put the important information and right at the end, you put the important information. Looks like a funny face, looks like a fish. All right, the second main structure is organizing your letter by time or visits or chronologically by a chronology. So in which case the structure might look like this. You have the reason for writing, the main medical issue, what happened on the first visit, what happened on the second visit, what happened on the most recent visit, and what's the discharge management plan. Okay, so you can also structure your writing like this. What you'll find, um, especially for doctors and physios, uh, I'm not sure about the other professions, less so for nursing, for those of you who work in professions where somebody will come and see you several times in a row, like a physio, for example, or a doctor, okay? But then you're going to refer them to a specialist. So you'll be saying, hey, specialist, this person came to me with this issue. This is the main medical issue. When they first came, this is what the problem was. Then they came again a week later and the problem had become worse. Finally, they visited me yesterday and the problem's gone completely out of control. So I'm referring this patient to you for whatever. Okay, so that's a chronological structure which might be important. This leads us to number four, which we are talking about in depth today, which is transformation, the final step of the E2 language writing method. Okay, transforming case notes. So it's kind of similar to interpreting case notes. Because when you're interpreting a case note, for example, you're looking at, uh, let's, look at let's look at this one here. So the first step was to interpret. And that means to read this and to think to yourself, what does this mean? 13 months. Okay, remember this is past surgical history. Always pay attention to that subheading. Past surgical history, 13 months, eye surgery to align eyes. Now, the interpretation, there's two ways to interpret this. One is 13 months ago, Jane, this patient Jane, had eye surgery to align her eyes, which by the way is wrong. That's not right. Because we're looking at past surgical history, uh, 13 months. Here in the medical history, there's talking about she was born premature. So we're probably thinking or the correct interpretation based on the context would be when Jane was 13 months old, she had eye surgery to align her eyes. So that's the interpretation. The transformation when you start to write this is the same thing except what you're doing is taking that mental interpretation and writing it out on the paper. Okay, so it's transforming. So you're transforming that onto the paper, but it's the same process. Basically, you're just expressing it in written form. Cool, this is an important step, and there's a couple of two key, two, two key things that I wanna teach you about this step, okay? Okay, first of all, these are the key skills you need to know about transformation. One, how to turn a case note into a grammatical sentence. How to turn, sorry, number one is how to turn a single case note into a grammatical sentence. The second key skill is to combine related case notes into a single sentence. So let's look at this one first, turning a single case note into a grammatical sentence. Let me just check that everything's working and functioning on YouTube, everyone's happy. Okay, is everybody happy? Yes. 
All right, good. I think everyone's happy. Let me just check the Zoom webinar. Yes, everyone's happy. And we've got 150 people watching this, which is cool. Oops, wrong one. Here we go. Let's do this. Let's turn a single case note into a grammatical sentence. Let's take this one here, two weeks old, stroke, caused cerebral palsy. Let's turn this case note here. I want you to transform this case note into a single grammatical sentence. You have 45 seconds. Make this grammatical. Ready? Type it into the chat. Go. Okay, how did you go? Hopefully that was enough time. That's the kind of, you need to move obviously quite rapidly in the OET exam, but that's kind of what you're doing. You're taking those case notes and you're, you know, organizing them is probably the most difficult thing, I think, thinking about a nice structure for your letter. But once you've thought about the structure and your paragraphs, then you're going, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, paragraph one, for example, is gonna be about past medical history. For example, it might not be, there's no set structure changes according to the letter, but then you're going to combine case notes into this paragraph and so that transformation step is critical. Um, let me show you mine. So I've written a, a three of them here. First one I wrote, at two weeks of age Jane suffered a stroke which caused her cerebral palsy. Okay, makes sense. Second one I wrote, at the age of two weeks, Jane had a stroke which resulted in cerebral palsy. Third one, Jane had a stroke when she was two weeks old which caused her cerebral palsy. So I've just moved that adverbial there, two weeks old, to the middle of the sentence. They all say the same thing basically. That's how you transform a single case note into a sentence. Let's do one more and then we're going to do the co combining case notes activity. So let's transform this one here. Can use computer phone dictation software. I'm gonna give you a few good examples, but first of all, you have 45 seconds to transform this into a grammatical sentence. Cool, all right, how did you go? Before we move on and look at some p possible suggested answers, all of you on YouTube, I want you to click that subscribe button down there, okay? That means every time we do a live stream, you'll be notified on your phone, you can just sit there and watch it, okay? And plus, we wanna increase our number of subscribers and hopefully one day get to 100,000. So click the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, click the little bell so you'll be notified about our live streams. Cool, and feel free to like this video if you feel that it's helping you. Okay, let's see my suggested answers here. Can use computer phone dictation software. Obviously, we're talking about Jane. So Jane has the ability to use a computer, phone, as well as dictation software. Pretty straightforward. Or Jane is capable of using a variety of technology, including her computer, phone, and dictation software. What I've done with this one here is I've combined these into a single term, communicative technology. Instead of mentioning each one individually, 
I've just said, please note that Jane is able to use a variety of communicative technology. Or Jane is able to use um, a variety of technology to communicate. Okay, so you don't have to mention individual words like this. You can find a synonym or a category, a categorizing word like this um, to change it as well. And that's a very skillful thing to do. So it's a good idea as long as it says the same thing. Okay, let's look at the second key skill here in transforma transformation, transformation, transforming case notes. That is being able to combine related case notes, so several case notes, into a single sentence. And you need to be able to do this. What you don't want to do is just have one sentence per case note in the paragraph. So your paragraph has like seven or ten sentences. What you need to be able to do is to go, okay, that case note, that case note, and that case note are related and pull them together into one sentence, okay? This is a real key skill, um, and it's an essential skill to getting a high score. Uh oh, my internet connection is unstable for some reason. Just let me check that everything's working. Yes, everything seems to be okay. Cool, all right, let's continue on. So let's combine these, uh, let's combine these two case notes here. Lives alone, has rehab aid, handles shopping errands. Let's combine these two case notes into a grammatically correct single sentence. You have 45 seconds. How did you go? Hopefully you had enough time here. Now this is, this when you combine multiple case notes together into a single sentence, it gives you an opportunity to write a different type of sentence, a more complex sentence, okay? Writing simple sentences is fine because they're nice and clear, but in order to maximize your grammar score, you also have to Put in a variety of sentence structures. It's not like the IELTS where you, you know, wow, the IELTS is very strict on variety of sentence structures. The OET is uh, more forgiving, but still you should have some compound, some complex, and probably lots of, of simple sentences, okay? But you still need some complex ones. So let's have a look here. The first one I have, uh, well, these are both complex sentences. Let's read the first one. Jane lives alone, but has a rehabilitation aide who handles her shopping and errands. Okay, so I've really done a literal, I've just taken that, um, that, handles that, and that, right? So I've really just taken that whole thing and put it into a sentence. This one is, I've written it in my own words, and that's probably a little bit better to do, as long as it says the same thing. Although Jane lives by herself, she does have an aide who provides home support. So what have I done here? First of all, I've written a complex sentence using although dot 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 dot. I've changed lives alone to lives by herself. Um, I've, I've, I've kept just the word aid there. And, it, and what I've done here is handles shopping and errands. I've just called that home support, okay? so I've used a bit of a synonym here. And that's a good one. They're both fine. This one's probably better. Okay. Whoops. Let's do this one here. Non-ambulatory power wheelchair for mobility. Let's combine these two case notes into a single grammatical sentence.
Okay. So I guess you can see the association between these two case notes. Now these two case notes might not be together in the booklet. They may be separated. One comes from, I don't know, I, w I won't say which category. One comes from up here and the other one comes from down there, right? But you can see that they're associated. There's a relationship. And so you pull that one, you pull this one, put it together and put it into one sentence. Okay, that's a good thing to do. It saves on word count and it just, it's a more sophisticated way to write. So it might say something like this, Jane cannot walk, but she uses a power wheelchair to move. Okay, compound sentence. Or Jane cannot ambulate, however, she uses a power wheelchair for transport. Okay, I could have said Jane is non-ambulatory, but that, I guess that would be fine. But probably, again, who am I speaking to? Who am I writing to? I think uh, using clearer language might be better in this case. But that's fine. Good, and I've changed here mobility to transport or mobility to move here. You can see the synonyms that I've used here to show off my writing skills. Cool. Let's finish up by talking about some ways to link bits and pieces in your linking bits, it should say bits, linking bits and pieces in your writing. Um, this is sort of more, more a question of organization, but what happens is this. You look at the case notes, and you say, okay, I'm gonna write a paragraph about this, I'm gonna write a paragraph about this, and a paragraph about this, right? But I've got this other case note that doesn't really fit into any of these paragraphs. It's just a sort of, it's just an odd case note that, that, that's not related to this theme, this theme, or this theme. So what do you do with case notes like that? Because it's relevant and it's important and you need to include it, but it doesn't really fit anywhere. So I'm gonna show you what to do with that. So what you can do is just have a single sentence paragraph where you say, for your information, Jane, dot, 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 whatever it is. Maybe Jane doesn't speak English. So it's very important that you say that. For your information, Jane does not speak English. Or please note that Jane doesn't speak English. Or it's worth noting that Jane doesn't speak English. Importantly, Jane doesn't speak English. Something like that. So you can use these words or phrases you can tack it on to the end of a paragraph if you like, if it works, if it's the right paragraph to tack it onto. But what you want to do is preface it with one of these linking words. You don't want to just let it blend into the paragraph. You want to use something like, please note that, to make it stand out. Okay, so these are important linking words and phrases in your letter. The last thing I want to talk to you about is how to use the name because you're going to be mentioning the name numerous times throughout the letter. What's the best way to do that? Do you say Jane, 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 Jane? Or do you say she, 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 she? Or, yeah, so let's, let's have a look at this. Basically, this is how you do it. Pretty straightforward. So, in your introductory sentence, I'm writing to refer Jane or discharge Jane, whatever. Jane Doe, you use her full name, okay? Now, she's female, it, you can gather that by the name, or it will say her sex on the case notes in some, some regard, so you'll be able to interpret that she is male or female. Paragraph one, you'll start with just her name. Jane came to our clinic, da, 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 da. She, 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 her. Paragraph two, use her first name again. Jane visited our clinic again two weeks later. She, 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 her. Finally, yesterday, Jane presented again. She, she, her, her, whatever, okay? So you use the first name at the beginning of the paragraph, and then after that, you move to the pronoun, okay? So the name to pronoun. Cool, I hope that's clear. Guys, before you nick off and do your thing, if you're worried about your OET, if you need some help, go to e2language.com, sign up for free to our online course. All of the methodology lessons, all of the overview lessons, all of the practice material, writing samples, writing case notes, 
speaking, listening, reading part A, reading part B, it's all in there. We also offer one-on-one -on -one tutorials with expert OET teachers for speaking and writing and reading. Uh, you can get feedback on your writing. Uh, lots and lots of stuff here at e2language.com. We are, as I said at the beginning, a premium preparation provider, so you can trust us. Cool, now I'll go and do some questions. If you have any questions, pop them into the chat. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube Live or YouTube, click the subscribe button, leave a comment and click like. It'd be much appreciated.